A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Today we are going to take a look at this nonlinear Diophantine equation. Square root of x plus y is equal to 7 and x plus square root of y is equal to 11. Um, no, that's not a congruent sign, that's a third stripe on the equals to. That means identically equal. I just like to use it from time to time, so in case you got questions, um, this is just what it means. And we want to solve this one today. And if I'm not mistaken, um, this one has been first solved by Ramanujan somewhere um, at the start of the first century, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, while talking to ghosts or some shit, I don't know. No, but um, I think I read about it in his notes. There's like a series of seven uh, notes, um, so seven, seven books with notes in them of Ramanujan. And I think it was somewhere in there because he liked to denest radicals and radical equations. <clears throat> and it's an interesting and very nice problem. And yeah, we are going to dive right in. By the way, if you're not yet familiar with Diophantine equations and all of this number theory stuff, I invite you to try out the number theory courses over on Brilliant. More information at the end of the video. Other than that, link down there in the description to try it out for yourself. And now we are going to dive right in. So there are many ways to solve an equation like this. One way would be to square, for example, both of these equations. Then you are going to end up with something that has um, x and y kind of denested. And then you can subtract both equations. But there's actually a way I find to be more elegant here in this case. And I would like to use this one. And for this, we are going to act um, on those equations just like with regular Gaussian elimination. Namely, we are going to subtract both equations from one another. Um, we don't want to get into the negatives. Also, it's a Diophantine e equation. I haven't said this um, fact before, but that means we want x and y to be element of natural numbers. So just to get this out of the way, okay? This is what it means for equation to be Diophantine or out of the positive and negative integers. Now we are going to subtract the um, uh, second equation from the first one and thus we don't get into the negatives here. So it really doesn't matter which way you subtract. Giving us overall 11 minus 7, um, not y, but 7, is equal to 4. And other than that, if we were to subtract these two from one another, we are going to get on the one hand um, x plus square root of y, and then minus y, minus square root of x. And now we are going to bring a bunch of things together. We are just going to group and then we are going to factor a tiny little bit in a very, very sneaky way. <clears throat> what we are going to do is we are going to bring x and y together. Okay, meaning that 4 is indeed equal to x minus y. And also we are going to get plus, so those two together, plus y minus square root of x. Square root of y. Um, now what we can do is I want to bring it into the order something something x minus something something y. So we are going to factor out a negative sign here. So negative parentheses square root of x minus square root of y. Why? You are going to see in a second. It's, it's, it's very nice. It's very elegant. Um, <clears throat> if you take a look at x here, we want to bring it into the form of square root of x something. How is x connected to square root of x? Well, the square root of x, but the whole thing squared, is the same as x once again. Meaning what we can do is we can rewrite x and y respectively as being the square root of x, but squared, minus the square root of y, but squared. And this is pretty damn nice if you ask me. This is indeed just the difference of two squares. So a squared minus b squared. And we know what the difference of two squares is, how we can rewrite it. We can rewrite it as the multiplication of the square root of x minus the square root of y times the square root of x plus the square root of y and minus the square root of x minus the square root of y. And now here is where the real magic happens. Namely, we can now factorize the number 4 into two linear factors. We are going to factor out the square root of x minus the square root of y on both of these summons giving us overall 4 is equal to the square root of x minus the square root of y and then times the square root of x plus the square root of y. That's the first part and minus, okay, we got 1 times this factor, so minus 1. And this is very good. We have now factorized our 4. 
And since the natural numbers, if I'm not mistaken, make up a Gaussian ring, that means that we can uniquely factorize the number four into linear factors into a product of two things. So fundamental theorem of ar arithmetic, arithmetic, no arithmetic, I think, um, holds here. Meaning, how can we factorize the number four <coughs> using two factors? It can either be one and four or the other way around, four and one, or it can be the prime factorization, two times two. Meaning we got three cases together where two of these cases are actually symmetric. Meaning we get uh, basically a system here. Oh, okay, a little case work. So we get that um, square root of x minus the square root of y is equal to either one or it can be equal to two for the prime factorization part or it can be equal to four. Now we can have it the other way around, okay, rather right symmetric, or we can have the case. So square root of x plus square root of y, and then minus one is equal to, um, okay, so let's put it nicely. It can either be equal to, if the first part is equal to one, it must be equal to four, or if it's equal to two, it must be equal to two, or if it's equal to four, the first part must be equal to one. So those right here are the cases that we have right now. And now we can start manipulating those equations, okay, that's a system of two equations once again that we got here. And what I'm going to do is at first, um, it, it really doesn't matter how you do it, you can either add one on both sides here at first or what we can immediately do is we can just add both of these equations together. No matter how you do it, square root of y is going to get eliminated, making us or letting us solve for the square root of x in the process. Let us just add two equations, okay, those two, and then we are going to see what we are going to get on the right hand side. On the left hand side, obviously, we are going to get square root of x, but two times if we add it, minus one. So, square root of x minus one is hence equal to so 4 plus 1 is 5, 2 plus 2 is 4, and 4 plus 1 is 5. As mentioned before, that's a very symmetric Diophantine equation. Two of the cases are symmetric, meaning we're just going to consider one of the cases, namely 5 here. Okay, so 5, or it can be equal to 4. Now we can solve this equation, obviously. We can add 1 on both sides, giving us now a case, square root of x, being equal to either, we can have 6, or we can have 4 plus 1 is 5. Now, I forgot the number 2 here, because we need 2 times, square root of x. <laughs> I just now noticed, but it was probably in annotation here. And now we are going to divide both sides by 2. <coughs> if we were to divide both sides by 2, we are going to get that the square root of x is equal to 6 divided by 2 is 3. Or it can be 5 divided by 2. Hmm. 5 divided by 2. That is rather fishy. If we want to solve for x, we need to square both sides. But squaring a fraction like this one right here, which is not fully cancelled, it's still going to be a fraction and number in some kind of way. But we restrict it for the matter of Diophantine equation x and y to be out of the natural numbers. Meaning this case right here can go fuck itself, okay? We don't need this. Meaning square root of x is equal to 3, or in other words, we have that x is equal to none. Now, we are basically done because we can plug the solution for x or square root of x into our e equation. If we plug square root of x into here, we are going to get square root of x is equal to 3. So 3 plus y is equal to 7. Meaning if we were to subtract 3 on both sides, we get that y is equal to 4. And this also fits our other equation, namely nine plus square root of four, so that's two. So nine plus two is equal to 11, and that works out. Yeah, that obviously checks out. And yeah, I think that was a very elegant solution using a factorization of the number four here in the process by using the difference of two squares. And if you want to learn more tricks like these that we used here on the factorizations, or you just want to learn about number theory, Diophantine equations, and all the like in general, then I invite you to try out the concepts of today's sponsor, Brian, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. 
Now, those are always a lot of fun. And actually, you can transform problems like these into analytical problems too. I mean, if it's a Diophantine equation, it's something discrete. You can only plug in discrete points like one, two, three, four into this equation. But actually, if you were to let x and y to be element of the ring numbers, you can turn this Diophantine equation into, for example, some kind of nonlinear equation that you can also graph. And graphing things and plotting stuff is one of the things to visualize mathematics, one of the tools that you can use to make problems like this more clear to your eye. And this is what Brilliant is for. With their over 60 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it the mathematics that we did today, physics, chemistry and all of this other crazy stuff that you can study at university, they make it easy for you to learn something new every day by using visuals, graphics, interactive learning content that you can use your own two hands on to get a better understanding of the topics at hand. And in all of these interactive courses you are going to find a lot of exercises. You are going to start off with a certain topic and the topics are going to start off rather easily with just the introduction and they are going to get gradually harder, giving you a better understanding overall of the topics that you are learning right now and also when the difficulty gets higher you are also going to be able to apply the knowledge that you have used before to the new problems that you are solving right now. Um, this is just the way education goes but Priyan does a very good job at um, bringing or transferring knowledge to the viewer or the content user in general. I don't know how to describe it but um, it's a really good feeling learning with Brand. It's a feeling of satisfaction and also you feel like you were able to do something on your own. Even if you fail on one of the exercises, you can just take a look at the resolution which is written by experts in their field and you can still get a good understanding of everything that you have done wrong and that you should have done right. It's a pretty good concept and the, the best way to learn about it is to just experience it for yourself. Why not make sure to use the link down there at the top of the description preen.org slash flamblemass. With it you are going to get free access to a big portion of Preen already but more importantly the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription which is a pretty fantastic deal considering how much content they already have available on the website and they are adding on a regular basis like monthly basis new courses and brushing up on older ones it's amazing you should check it out and support the channel this way other than that i thank you guys for watching don't forget to pre-register for my mobile game WAC and to check out stemwitch.eu for handcrafted stem products and other things and up until next video i wish you guys a fabulous day ciao